Today we're going to talk about total quality management techniques and how we can apply these to our project management and our product development activities. Total quality management involves the application of quality techniques to all segments of the enterprise. We are really recommending that TQM be applied to project management also. Um, you see these tools applied in manufacturing uh, quite extensively. Most PMs or project managers that we have known focus first and foremost on project schedule and project budget. And then lastly on the quality issues, this is most probable because the quality is not something that is often instantly measured. Um, the, you know pretty quickly if your project's late. You know pretty soon if you're over budget. But we suspect this approach may be even maybe a little topsy turvy or even backwards. At, at few points, do we see project managers applying um, sensible quality techniques to their own process? And ultimately, we have witnessed uh, the, the projects devolving into weekly nagging meetings that last for hours and where things are de very debatable and, and not a measured and compared measurement. A set of activities. We know that powerful methods exist to eliminate flailing that we usually see, and the flailing gets progressively worse to the end of the project. So if we consider our organization, consider organizations that routinely develop a set of products or services. Um, these companies may not be manufacturing, but they have processes and structured, you know, in you know, such a way they deliver products to the consumer from the design side. We will call my hypothetical version of this company a project factory, for lack of a better name. They produce something that goes to manufacturing. Each area or stage in the manufacturing process, for, for example, functional area, for example, systems engineering, embedded engineering, and verification, have, have sets of activities that, are, that they perform using some set of defined processes. Even if they're ad hoc, they're something that's uh, somewhat repeatable based on the history that the people who are executing uh, have acquired. The same is true for the project management discipline. In the end, we want to know how these TQM tools can be applied to these areas to continually understand how our organization works, and more importantly, to continually improve that performance. Now, some people may think total quality management is old school in the age of Six Sigma quality and manufacturing and lean, lean practices. Um, but we disagree. Six Sigma is, is obvious choice for cost reduction, and lean is a primary tool for waste reduction. And lean and Six Sigma is a translation of Six Sigma algorithm and hard money approaches with lean. TQM is the approach of choice when an organization is, or a part of an organization desires to perform an overhaul of the complete system or understand what they are working with in terms of the complete system. If we do not measure, we have no idea where on a continuum of the enterprise accomplishments we are. So once we know objectives, we need to know what measurements will inform us whether we've made those objectives. Then we need, when we make those, understand those, what measurements need to be taken, we need to understand what control we can exert to drive the performance where we prefer and not where we happenstancely show up. <laughs> project managers should enforce metric acquisition from the onset of the project and never let up. The only time metrics uh, excuse me, I need a drink. <laughs> the only time metrics capture should stop is for specific metric only if the metric has been clearly shown to be meaningless. If we start off well and we create the chances, we will finish well. Our project management activities produce measurements or metrics as well, just as the line organization does. If an organization has aspirations of being a project factory, for example, this, these tools would be required as they would for a manufacturing environment. Specifically, the tools in total quality management are applied to manufacturing discipline in our project factory world in 
the Lion organization. While all projects, by definition, are unique, we can find considerable routine within that uniqueness. There are certain steps or approaches that we will frequently go through. For example, for our embedded automotive company, we may always start with generating a set of concepts and then a critique of those concepts to improve the product before we start putting uh, hardware together. In that way, the concept generation activity, for example, could be considered a step in the manufacturing process of that project. And we take the perspective that the concept generation is a station in the manufacturing, and we can apply TQM tools to understand the capability and variation in the product pro production process in that specific activity at that station. While this explicitly speaks the line organization, it need not be limited to that. These tools can be applied to the development processes as well as the data that falls in the area of project management. We'll start off with scope. Product requirements, the scope informs what the product requirements, and they come from a variety of places. The source of the requirements can be legal or or specific to a particular industry. Customers can be internal and external. Manufacturing portion of our company may have specific requirements for the product, for our product development as well. Often they do. We may have requirements based on capa uh, the capability of our pick and place machines, for example, or reflow solving, or surface mount electronics. These are requirements that come on top of requirements from our end customer who is trying to achieve some objective, and our company who's trying to achieve some objective as well. And we'll often find that these requirements will be competing or contradictory. For example, we may want a particular set of features and a particular set of battery life on this handheld device, and the two of those can, can conflict when battery density or power density and size do not match handheld requirements. Capturing requirements is not a simple matter either. Requirement solicitation requires to attention to and prioritizing balancing these aforementioned demands from both our internal and our external customers. We have to know what is really meant when we ask questions of our customers, and this requires interviews and clarifying and follow-up questions. It's not, it's not that easy to document. If we do not already know the sorts of stimuli to which our project will be subjected, we may have to learn this information through field studies. And there's some more measurement we'll have to do. Product requirements set the stage for any project, and the approach of our project to meeting the customer's need will depend on these requirements. Our project approach, in turn, establishes some of the risks to which the project will suffer. For example, if we have a microcontroller-based product, and we know we're going to be exposed to software risks. If we select a microcontroller that's still under development, then we expose our project to the possibility of a microcontroller will never make it to production. And there are plenty of stories of those kind of events happening. According to IEEE Standard 830, 1998, recommended practices for software requirement specification. The characteristics of good requirements are correct, ambiguous, complete, consistent, ranked for importance, verifiable, modifiable, and traceable. These requirement attributes begin to set the measurable items for the project scope. And I'm going to shift gears a little bit here. We're going to move to what kind of tools we have at our disposal. The collection of tools, a la 